Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a writing challenge today. I've not done any writing challenge videos before, but I've been thinking about like ways to create content that I'm hoping is going to be useful for those of you who follow my channel because you are already a writer or you're an aspiring writer or something like that. And if you see my latest book review video, you'll know that I've slightly changed the way that I review books now so that I can hopefully make those useful rather than just being like, I like this book, I like this book. I do it now where it's like, this. these are the narrative techniques that this author uses. And I'm hoping that those are gonna be more useful. I have already had feedback on those videos to say that people are finding them useful. So that's really great. Um, so I'm hoping to do something a little bit similar in terms of like actually writing. So rather than just me talking about my writing, which I'm always happy to do, but I thought I could look at ways that we could learn how to write better together. So this is something that I'm going to do with you. Or should I say, I'm going to do on this video. And if you would like to do it with me, then you can do. Um, I'm sorry if I'm talking a little bit funny. Um, I've had dental surgery done and unfortunately it's left a bit of an infection in my mouth. And it's actually made my tongue swell up a little bit. So if I'm a little bit kind of <sighs> slurry, that's why. I apologise. Right, I need to get up my plan so that I can see what it is that we're doing. Okay, so the writing challenge that we're going to do today, as you can probably tell by the title, is we're going to have a go at writing some flash fiction. And I will tell you a little bit of what flash fiction is in just a second, but the kind of format for this video is we're going to have an introduction and then we're going to get into trying three flash fiction challenges. So if you're interested in learning how to write a little bit better maybe than you do at the moment or to become more structured in the way that you write if you're just interested in different writing challenges or even if you're a uh, flash fiction aficionado and you'd like to see how somebody like me as a beginner kind of gets on with flash fiction then hopefully this is a video for you so what is flash fiction so flash fiction is a form of fiction writing that is noticed for being very short and i suppose the flash refers to either how quickly you can write it or how quickly it is read um, and there are a few different forms of flash fiction. There is the six word story, and that is literally six words that can tell an entire story. And the most famous one of these is for sale, baby shoes, never worn. It's a six word story, but you can read so much into that story. I mean, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. That just tells you so much. You know, it's written from the perspective of somebody who has maybe lost a child or had hopes of having a child and those hopes have changed. Or it could be a positive thing. They had no need of those shoes because the baby grew up and, and they just never wore them. The, there's so many things that come into mind when you read a story that is six words long like that. But the whole idea that is that it's supposed to be a full story, it's supposed to be complete, it's supposed to tell you enough that kind of without reading the story, you know what the story is around those words. So that's the smallest, the shortest form of flash fiction. And that story actually, The Baby F Shoes for Sale, is commonly attributed to Ernest Hemingway, but there's no kind of direct link to Ernest Hemingway, but a lot of people do say that it's Ernest Hemingway who wrote that flash piece of flash fiction. So you have that form, which is six words. You then have something called a dribble, which is 50 words. So you have to write a story in 50 words. Then you have a drabble, which is 100 words. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try a six word flash fiction. I'm going to try a dribble. I'm going to try a drabble, which sounds a bit like an innuendo. <laughs> But anyway, um, let's move swiftly on from that. So one of the reasons that I was really interested to try flash fiction is because I struggle to complete my stories. I start these ideas. I think they're going to be great. And then somewhere along the line, usually when I get to the point where I'm like, I don't actually know what's happening next. I fall off the bandwagon and I fail to finish those stories. I've still never finished a piece of fiction at the moment. That is going to change this year. However, at the moment, I haven't finished a piece of fiction. And so the idea of doing something that is flash fiction, it doesn't require months, weeks, you know, a huge number of kind of hours input. It's something that I can not overthink. It's just about playing with words. It's about playing with narrative. It's asking me to kind of 
stretch those creative muscles without having to go too far in terms of like a commitment and that's something that I find quite interesting and also I do believe in trying different exercises and different writing exercises to improve yourself as a writer and to grow so that's why I decided that I would give it a go myself. So now we know what flash fiction is let's get into the writing it shall we? So the first challenge is to write a six word story and it has to be complete it has to tell enough of what's going on in just six words. So I'm going to film myself at the computer writing um, and then after I've finished it, I will tell you what my six word story is. I'll read it out to you. Right, I've been sat here, just pull my camera a little bit closer. I've been sat here, um, I'm trying not to overthink it at this stage because I'm just letting whatever kind of comes into my head come out on paper. So yeah, I've done two. Uh, so at the top, <laughs> there at the top, that's the example one from Ernest Hemingway. And then the two underneath are mine. So let me show you what I've written. So you'll see at the top, there's the example one. And then underneath, I've written two. So I've written, the water rose, you were gone. And then the other one I wrote was, with one coffee, one glance, love. Because the thing was, I wrote the first one and I thought, oh, it's very, very kind of sad. It's obviously very emotive. I was thinking actually about... Um, the tsunami at the time and how in a moment somebody's life can be completely changed um and then i thought well how can i write one that's a little bit different that's maybe more, more built on a positive um kind of interaction or a positive moment in somebody's life or a positive story so that's when i came up with the second one um with one coffee one glance love um so those are my two what do you think i mean it's hard to know, isn't it? But did those give you um, a sense of a story behind them? Did you want to know more? Do you feel like you got the full story or do you feel like it was tempting or teasing or not complete? Let me know what you think because, um, yeah, i just love to know. And if you want to have a go at writing any of these flash fix and these six word ones, please do share them with me in the comments. I'd love to kind of talk about them if you feel comfortable. If you want to send them to me privately on a DM via Instagram, then you can do that as well. So that's the first challenge done. So the next challenge that we have is to write a 50 word dribble. For the sake of continuity, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with those two stories. And I think I might try and do both of them so that there's two different options. But we'll see because 50 words isn't a massive amount of words, but I still need to be considering the story and this, that and the other. So I think I'm going to start with the tsunami one. So we're going from the water rose you were gone and I'm going to expand that into a 50 word flash fiction so let's do that I've already gone up to 83 words that's no good I need to cut it down I need to think smaller think shorter a bit longer so it took nine minutes for me to write that and I have to say I just started kind of putting kind of thoughts out on the thing and then like I say I checked and it was like on 88 words already and I was like oh god right okay it's actually really hard to contain yourself when you want to try and tell like a full story or as close to a full story as you can in the word count so let's have a look at what my dribble looks like <laughs> I'm sorry I can't the innuendos on this are so bad let's have a look at what my 50 word flash fiction looks like We'll go for that instead. So this is my 50 word flash fiction. We stood on the beach, fingers entwined. Was this real? You, me, here. You took my hand and smiled similar words to me, but then you looked away. A frown from you, a scream from another voice. 
a squeeze of love between our hands before the water snatched you away. That's it. What do you think? Um, I'll leave that up there so you can have another quick read through if you want to. So this is the 50 word dribble that is based on the first flash fiction that I wrote, which was The Water Rose, You Were Gone. Um, and I was trying to think of conveying where we were in this story, the two, the two people in this story, where they were. Um, interesting that I've written it in first person. Um, but then again, I suppose the first um, flash fiction was written in first person kind of as well. Um, so yeah, I was trying to think about where these two people were that were in this story. So that's why I put we put on the beach. I was trying to convey that sense of in extreme happiness that a lot of people had that day on the beach um, with the Boxing Day tsunami, which is what I was thinking of as the kind of inspiration for this story. Um, and how so many people went from being so incredibly happy to absolutely horrified in seconds and that's kind of what i wanted to convey with that so um that's why i said was this real you me here you took my hand and smiled similar words to me that was something else i wanted i wanted the kind of reader to get a sense of how connected this couple were how they were kind of like you know maybe newlyweds or just best friends even um and then but then you looked away. That's the moment when the narrative changes. That's the moment when the story changes and something happens. A frown from you, a scream from another voice. Again, I was trying to convey um, the fact that it wasn't just about two people. This was about, um, you know, a lot of... It was happening to other people in the same space. Um, and then a squeeze of love between our hands before the water snatched you away. Again, that kind of... I wanted to get that sense of the fact that you never know... Or you very rarely know in these kind of situations that the last thing you say is going to be the last thing you say to somebody. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to get a sense of the fact that there wasn't time other than a quick squeeze of a hand for many people to tell their loved one how much they loved them before they were snatched away from them. So, yeah, a heavy, a heavy subject. But I'm hoping that I did that kind of justice in that 50 word flash fiction. So... I think what I might do off camera is I might just have a go at the coffee one um, and see how I get on with that one. And then we'll go on to the 100 word one. So I had a go at the coffee one um, off camera just because I felt like there would be less pressure. And also I don't want this video to be super, super long. Um, and so I will show you what I wrote for that one as well. So for this one, the six word flash fiction was with one coffee, one glance, love. And when, then with the 50 word flash fiction... I wrote, she needed the caffeine, not the social interaction. Ordering her coffee with head bent, she pretended to count the coins in her purse. The voice behind the counter had the soft lilt of home, a reminder that closed her throat. She looked up into blue Irish eyes and everything changed. So I thought with that one, I was thinking about two characters in a very ordinary situation. And this is something that I feel like a lot of people could relate to. The fact that you just want to go in and order a coffee on a morning and not necessarily have to talk to anybody. And how sometimes we can be completely blindsided by memories, by people, by sounds, by smells that bring home memories of home and that kind of thing. And that's why I kind of wanted a soft, the soft lilt of home. Um, it's audible, you know, she's not she's obviously away from home at the time as his main character and a reminder that closed her throat it's supposed to be emotional for her to hear the lilt of home um and that brings up so much like who is the person behind the counter why do they have a a, a home voice um and yeah she looked up into the blue irish eyes and everything changed so i didn't want to put the word love into the wider um flash fiction because it was already there in the six word one and it's implied in the fact that she looked up into the blue Irish eyes and everything changed. So, yeah, I don't know which is better. I don't know which is worse. Um, but I've enjoyed putting those together so far. Yeah, so far I've really enjoyed writing these. And I've quite liked having the same subject through both challenges because then it means that I'm kind of developing the story and making it a bit fuller, kind of adding a little bit more detail, but also trying to keep it to a really, really kind of tight word count as well. Yeah. 
Let's go on to the 100 word flash fiction. This is called A Drabble and we have 100 words to tell our story. So let's get on with our tsunami narrative and see if I can expand the story with another 50 words. Do you know what I've just realised? I've just been rereading over the 50 word one and I've written our hands are entwined and then I've written you take my hand. How could I have got that like you can't take someone's hand if you've got your hand entwined with them. See see this is interesting. I didn't even spot that until I came on to writing the hundred word one and I'm reviewing the previous version to write it again. Interesting. I don't really know what that means other than I'm probably a terrible writer <laughs> but anyway on we go. Right, um, I've spotted some more errors. Let me just bring the camera closer again. Um, so as I was writing that, I noticed that error in the fact that in my 50 word flash fiction, I'd written, um, we stood on the beach, fingers entwined. Was this real? You, me, here. You took my hand. So you're supposed to have, we're supposed to have hands entwined and then he takes or the person takes the hand again. So. That was an error that I spotted. Also, as I was writing this 100 word one, I noticed that actually um, I was writing it in the first, no, I was writing it in the present tense and the other two, the flash fiction and the six word flash fiction were written in the past tense. So with the first six word, I wrote the water rose, past tense, you were gone. And then in the 50 word one, it was, we stood on the beach, you took my hand, you looked away, the water snatched you away. So it's all again past tense. But then I was right, as I was writing this one, I think because there's more space, there's more time, there's more um, kind of room to explain what's going on. It felt much more in the present. It felt as if it was really happening. So that's something that, well, actually, when I first wrote it, the first bit of it was past tense. So I'd started again with we stood on the beach and then I realised as I was writing it, it was present tense. So I've gone back and I've just adjusted it slightly. But it's interesting, the fact that I haven't really thought about that, but the tense has changed um, almost automatically without me really thinking about it. But I think it works better. So let me show you what I wrote. So this is the 100 word flash fiction, which is known as a drabble. We stand on the beach, fingers entwined, the new crushed carbon ring resting gently between us, the way a child might rest against a hip, perhaps one day. I smile at you, you who I thought I would never meet, you who became me, who became you. You smile back, similar words in your eyes, your expression, your touch. We're here in this paradise. But Eden is a cruel jerk. You turn from me, your joy is stolen. Someone screams, I see blue. The water rises, we have only one squeeze of love between our hands, then you are gone. I probably read that with weird um, emphasis. I'm not very good at doing um, different expressions in, I'm not good, very good at saying expression. I can read that with a lot of emotion, a lot of expression, but I can't really say it. So I'll just leave it up here so you can read it through again if you want to. Um, yeah, so adding a little bit more kind of context. So the crushed carbon ring, um, that came really because um, Tom, my husband, uh, has been watching a documentary about diamonds and the fact about the diamond industry and this, that and the other. So that somehow kind of made it into that bit of flash fiction there. Um, but it's supposed to ins insinuate that, you know, they're, they're recently married or recently engaged, this couple. Um, and then the way a child might rest against a hip, perhaps one day. It's kind of the promise, the hope, the future that people assume when they get married or get first get into a relationship that you're always going to have together again. That's kind of what I wanted to put in there. Um, and then you who I thought I would never meet, you who became me, who became you. I was again trying to kind of convey that sense of um, 
how close this couple are, how they are two halves of the same whole in some ways, but that's cliche, so I was trying not to write that. Um, and I was trying to think of a way of saying that and, and kind of not making it opinionated because there's also that thing of when we meet somebody and we become a couple, you lose a sense of yourself but you also become something new as well. So that's what I kind of wanted to convey in that that little sentence there. Um, and then we're here in this paradise, but Eden is a cruel joke. I wanted that, again, that sense of them being somewhere and it changing very quickly. Um, I didn't actually mean Eden, but I couldn't think of the other word for a paradise. I think like Paramore sang a song about it or something. I can't think of the word that I'm thinking of, but if I can, I will insert it later. I'll pop it up on screen now. Um, and yeah, I wanted that kind of that. I wanted, because the first bit was so gushy and warm and um, romantic, I wanted something that was cynical, something that was hard, something that kind of like instantly made you think of something different. You turn from me, your joy is stolen, someone screams, I see blue. Because I wanted the idea that the main character kind of didn't know what was going on, but was seeing things, but wasn't really processing what was going on. So that's why I added in the I see blue. Um, I wanted to put in the water rises. Again, I wanted to kind of lean back to the flash fiction right at the top where it was the water rose, you were gone. So I put the water rises. We have only one squeeze of love between our hands then you are gone. And I wanted that kind of sense again of not knowing really what was going on, but you had that ultra kind of tiny moment in time to be able to squeeze a hand and then the couple are ripped apart. So I don't think I've made any errors there like I did in the last one, but maybe I have. Uh, maybe I'll spot them later when I'm watching this back again. Um, but those are my three flash fictions. I did also take some time to do the coffee shop piece as well um, and I did that in the th in the hundred words. Um, sorry the footage is not very good here because it was really hard to just film um, the screen but it basically expanded about why she wasn't wanting to speak to anybody, where she was mentally and then how um, this guy in the coffee shop just completely cuts through her kind of like reluctance and her emotions and at the end I put in the Parisian melee because I wanted her to be somewhere completely different and alien to Ireland I felt like London was a bit of a cliche to go from Ireland to London so I put Paris in there and it also meant that I could use a French swear word at the end <laughs> rather than an English swear word because I felt like putting the f word there which is what I really wanted to put was maybe a little bit too harsh for a YouTube video so in that way I could put the French word in there make it a little bit funny a little bit ironic um and also hopefully it will um upset too many people on youtube so yes um what do you think of this one let me know in the comments what you think of this um flash fiction story as well so there you go those are my three attempts at flash fiction what do you think it's quite nerve-wracking actually writing something and then instantly sharing it because a lot of the time you write something and then you get the chance to go away you can come back you can read through it you can adjust but this feels very vulnerable putting myself in a position where I'm literally writing something and then asking you to kind of judge it and read it straight away so please be kind in the comments please don't say anything mean um obviously this is all rough this is all kind of me exploring it's experimental it's something that I'm hoping helps me kind of learn and adapt as a writer um I've really Really enjoyed that I have genuinely really enjoyed doing that in total this has probably taken just over an hour to do um it's all filmed at once as you'll probably tell from like the lighting and the fact that I'm in the same clothes and everything and yeah I've really really enjoyed doing it I think I'm going to do this again um not all the time because obviously it does take like an hour out of my day and I don't have a lot of time to spend on writing anyway um, but I think, you know, if I'm struggling a little bit, maybe if I'm getting to the point where I'm writing and I'm struggling to kind of think creatively or think about what comes next or get in the writing spirit, I might try this again. I might like set myself um, some kind of like goal or um, like pick random words out of a hat almost and make a story about them. So yeah, something like that could be quite fun if I just put like a load of ideas in a in a jar or something and then if I needed to I could just pluck it out or I could literally just 
think of something random to do like I did here. I just thought of two um, random topics as I was writing. So yeah, I I really enjoyed it and I think I'll definitely do it again. Um, let me know if you've ever written flash fiction or if you've done this with me or if you've watched this video and now you're inspired to go and have a go at some flash fiction. God, <laughs> that is hard to say when you have a tongue problem. So you're lisping at the time. Flash fiction. <laughs> If you're going to go away and try some flash fiction yourself, let me know how you get on and if you enjoyed it and what you found to be useful about it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try other writing challenges. So if you can think of any or if you've ever come across a writing challenge that you think would be good for me to try, then please let me know as well. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I create videos every Monday and they are about writing, books, history, period dramas, literature in general. Um, if any of that kind of stuff is your bag, then please do feel free to subscribe. And thank you to everyone who subscribes and watches my videos every week. Love you to bits. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Okay, take care. Bye.